ended up sinking the boat and got lost at sea for 21 hours. Did you all piss and shit into the water out of fear and swim in each other's piss and shit? Well, we were surrounded by sharks, so no one wanted to get in the water. Oh, hello. Hey, how's it going, man? Good, how are you? Good, enjoying my night off. So, Matt, what's going on? How can I get you today? Yeah, uh, nothing. I just wanted to call and share a story about a little fishing trip I had eight years ago. Uh, hit us. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, it was ten years ago. I went out fishing with uh, my boss and his boss from work, and we ended up sinking the boat and got lost at sea for 21 hours. Really? You were lost at sea yeah. for 21 hours? Yeah. Yeah, Coast Guard searching for us and everything. Uh, did you did you all piss and shit into the water out of fear and swim in each other's piss and shit? <laughs> Well, no, that's kind of the funny thing is uh, the way the boat sank, eventually we were able to climb on top of it and it floated for a little bit. And so the way we were postured was my boss was up top, I was in the middle, and then his boss was below me, and I actually pissed on him. So there's that. Um, was the was your guys' formation on the boat uh, similar to how you were ranked in the company? No, 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 no. He was, uh, so the guy on the top was the middle man, and the guy below me was actually the, the senior. Wow. So the so. senior on the bottom and the middle man on the top. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, uh, after it was all said and done, we found out why he was, and he was actually a good leader for taking that position. Um, Basically, the way he was uh, situated down at the bottom was he was holding onto a rope and basically doing like a curl up for, you know, 20 plus hours. And he ended up getting the, uh, what's it called? Is it rhabdomyolysis? That thing that like uh, ultra runners and super athletes get wow. where when they're doing extreme exercise, their muscles actually produce a poison that starts like breaking down everything. So you're telling me that this guy mm-hmm. was was doing an uh, uh, got a disease trying to save your life and you pissed on him? <laughs> well, got a disease just trying to be comfortable and yeah, I pissed on him. <laughs> I got to say, look, Matt, I don't know you too well, but that's just a dick move. Hey, it was, but he he gave me the go ahead. I gave him a warning. And said it was almost like that uh, Dumb and Dumber movie, man. I said, "Hey, I got a piss," and he's like, "Just let it go, brother. Just let it go." Wow, man, that guy is so, a fucking yeah, hero. He, did, you, he, he, did he get a medal for that? No, no, he didn't get a medal, but we still love him. Wait, why did you have to piss? Well, there was ocean everywhere. Why did you have to piss on him? That's like the like of of all the we, infinite places we, you could have pissed, <laughs> you could have avoided him. Well, we were surrounded by sharks, so no one wanted to get in the water. Oh. Well, you could pee in the water. So there... Uh, well, at that point, our muscles were too weak to stand up. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so oh, yeah. you were surrounded by sharks this whole time? Yeah, yeah. So the whole thing was we had gone out fishing, and it was our first time like landing some big fish. We... We ended up uh, hooking up with like two really big tunas and we fought them for probably about like 45 minutes to an hour. Mm. Uh, We lost one once we got it to the side of the boat, but the one we did land and get on the boat was about six feet and we we, we think it was six. We know it was six feet, but we imagine it's like 200 something pounds. So anyways, once you catch the fish, once you catch the tunas, you got to bleed them out and do everything like that and then you store them in a giant bag full of ice so that way it stays fresh till you get to the shore well the problem is is that ice is tied to the boat so you don't ever lose it or i'm sorry the bag is tied to the boat so you don't ever lose it but you've got a bag with a bleeding tuna inside of it so when the boat flipped over we basically just got a big piece of chum attached to the boat hanging in the water so it attracted some sharks wow did you think you were going to die at any point during this? 
Um, when the sunrise, when the sun rose on the the next day, I, I thought there might be a chance because, like, at that point, we were probably at like sixteen or eighteen hours in. So you started getting those, you started getting those thoughts, but they're not very helpful. So you try to push them out. Did uh, did any of you guys freak out? No, no, no. Luckily, the guys I had with me were really good dudes, and it was kind of uh, funny because that day on the boat, we were talking about it. It, it had happened. There was a uh, an NFL star who had actually died from he had gone out on a fishing charter the boat capsized and he tried to swim to shore and he ended up drowning and for some reason that day when we went out fishing my boss brought it up he's a big football fan he brought it up and he was talking about it and he's like if anything ever happens do not leave the boat stay as close to the boat as you can Mm -hmm. and so that's what we did and yeah everyone stayed pretty calm we just kind of joked around Try to keep each it other sounds clear like while we were out there. It sounds like he sunk the boat on purpose because he likes getting pissed on. Oh no, he didn't. He didn't because he didn't even have insurance on it. It was a brand new boat. Okay. All right. So, so I yeah, guess that theory is on that one. <laughs> is wrong. Um. <laughs> hmm. Man, you guys are very manly dudes. The so fucking killing fish and. Uh, uh, doing that uh, exercise thing and not freaking out. I mean, I don't. I oh. couldn't say the same about myself in that situation. <laughs> no, I, I freaked out at one point. The other two dudes were manly. There was a point uh, after the boat had first capsized, where the uh, basically the engines were just like leaking gasoline into the water, and we were holding onto the side of the boat, but the fumes were getting to us, so we tied off a rope. And just decided to like float away from the boat and hold on to the ropes. That way we can get away from the fumes. Oh, okay. Well, during that time, during that time, um, my boss noticed that there were sharks in the water. And one had actually come up and uh, tapped his nose on his leg. And my boss Holy kicked shit. him in the head. And he's like, hey, he's like, hey, a fucking shark just tried to come at me. And I remember telling him, I was like, hey, man. I can't do sharks. I need to get the fuck out of the water. <laughs> and so I this swam back to the boat as quick as I could. <laughs> fucking guy takes the worst position on the formation, gets a disease, <laughs> exerting his body to keep you guys safe, lets you piss on his head, takes you out on his boat, and kicks a shark in the face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was the manly guy. So we just kind of followed suit on shit. that. What's he doing now? <laughs> He's retired now. Still fishing. We're supposed to be doing a trip. Uh, I think this year will be the 10 year anniversary. Of course the motherfucker is still fishing. No one, nothing's going to keep that guy from doing what he wants to do. That's, that's cool, man. Oh yeah. That's really oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, it's cool um, what it's did you learn from the experience? Oh, surround yourself with good people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do do not hang out with people who are going to freak out and cause you more problems. Um. Well, so Luckily, what was I it had, like? I had older, wiser guys with me. What was it like getting um getting rescued? I was. It was pretty cool. It was. It was very relieving, of course. But uh, yeah, it was kind of crazy. The uh, Coast Guard. We saw them circling around us. Well, we finally were able to get their attention. I had a little mirror, and I'm hoping that's what got them, but we don't know. But they eventually saw us, and uh, yeah, the freaking badass swimmer dude jumps out, starts swimming over towards us, but we notice like every couple of feet he's swimming, he's like looking underwater, and we talked to him later, and yeah, they said from up above, we were just completely surrounded by sharks. So he was checking his whole way coming in, and then yeah, just... He called us off one by one. Rescue swam us to their little basket, pulled us up, and then they gave us uh, oranges and Snickers once we got in the helicopter. Um, I, I'm. Why did they get out? I, look, I don't know how to run the fucking Coast Guard, but why, why did they not just bring the boat? Mm-hmm. Why did he like jump off the boat and start swimming in the water? 
because at this point they had already been searching for us for a while and the helicopter was actually coming back in to refuel the he was the only one he was the closest one available i don't know if they actually sent boats out for us that night um but he was the closest one available so of course they stopped and got us as quick as they could mm. but the uh the night before we could see them searching for us but they were searching for us in the wrong spots they had like uh C-130s and helicopters shining big old lights trying to find us but they were looking where we weren't where, where we weren't at mm-hmm. um wow this is, did this give you any perspective on life at all or you, fuck it it may, it may have given me it may have given me a complex actually what kind because of complex I don't know mother earth tried to take us down and we said no nah, fuck that <laughs> You know what? You know what? You know what? You bring you bring up a good point because you could you bring up a very good point because you could come away from a near death experience one of two ways. Okay, you could come back thinking, "Oh my god, life is so fragile. I could have almost died. I'm going to be more careful. I'm going to be so grateful for every moment I I have uh, to breathe on this earth. I I can't believe it." Or the total opposite. Mother Nature tried to take me, and Mother Nature turns out is a weak bitch, can't do shit. I'm going to go <laughs> out and fight another shark and jump off of buildings and go crazy because I can't die. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit of like that. I mean, I, I, I pack a little more uh, safely. I make sure I always have my safety gear on me when I go out fishing, but, but yeah. Yeah, she can't do nothing. <laughs> Well, good on you. I hope you. I hope you continue to not die. <laughs> I'll keep trying. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No, just uh, yeah. Always surround yourself with good people. Don't don't always don't surround hang yourself. With people. Always surround yourself with good people. Never surround yourself with sharks. Yeah, yeah, we got that. Take care. Thanks. Hello? Oh, shit. Oh, hi. What is your name? Uh, Emma. Hi, Emma. How are you? I'm doing all right. How about you? I'm doing good. Um, is there anything that you wanted to talk about today? Okay. Yes, but we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Uh, well, we don't actually have to do any of what we're doing right now. <laughs> okay, valid. Uh, um, what is it? So, so I have a list of about thirty-two people that I have slept with, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they each kind of have a weird story attached to them. I did a lot of like Tinder hookups, mm-hmm. and I just kept a list for my records. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you want to give me a random number, I can tell you a little bit. Yeah, it says here. It person. says here you want me to pick a number between one and thirty, and you'll give you'll give the story. Yeah, if if you want, obviously, like. Okay, I yeah. here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking let's 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 do. Let's start. Let's do one of these stories and then see see how we feel. Nineteen. <laughs> I see nineteen. Fuck. What? Oh, so, it's nineteen. It's, it's, oh, I'm, all right. Now, I'm, now you got to tell us nineteen. So nineteen is Sam's boyfriend. Sam's boyfriend. All right. I want. Let's hear the story of Sam's boyfriend. So <laughs> I had a threesome with Sam and her boyfriend. I was not expecting that whenever I went over to Sam's place. I thought it was just going to be Sam and it was going to be my first experience with a girl. Like, it was going to be a cool time. And then a dude is in the driver's seat whenever he comes to pick me up from a dorm. So... (laughs) It was very uncomfortable. The girl was absolutely amazing. Sam was amazing. Um, 
also I'm reading chat. I know I shouldn't be, but say oh, I'm do, can you can on. you can you can you oh. not read chat, Emma, while you tell the story? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. All right, so there was a guy in the driver's seat. And he was just really creepy. Like mm. he kept on trying to I think he was trying to hit on me more than the girlfriend was and I just I wasn't vibing with him. He was missing some of his front teeth. Um, he was on the hockey team, so I think that's why he was missing. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. So, so um, you you thought that you were just going to be having sex with Sam, and then her boyfriend was yeah. there. How did he? <laughs> how did he get involved? Uh, I guess he was always involved. I just wasn't aware of it. If that makes what sense. What does that mean? That does not make any sense at all. Like. <laughs> Like when, whenever I was talking to Sam, she never mentioned a boyfriend. Oh, okay, all right. So you were talking with Sam about like, oh, hey, we're gonna meet, we're gonna hook up, all that stuff. Uh, and yeah. then she was under the impression that you were under the impression that her boyfriend would also be involved. Yeah, that you would be that you would be their unicorn, as they say. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So, I mean, look, when you showed up and the boyfriend was there, were you like, ah, I'm not into this? Or were you just like, ah, fuck it, let's do it? You know, I was kind of like, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> okay. And how did the experience prove, like, as you look back on it now, do you look back on it fondly or? So, what do you... no. <laughs> um, so none of us had a threesome before. And it was just awkward. So, like, none of us really knew what to do. So it was a lot of me and Sam having a moment and homeboy in the corner. You know what? You know? Honestly, being homeboy... <laughs> you know what? Being homeboy in the corner while your girlfriend and another girl having a moment, not a bad <laughs> corner to be in. Not a bad gig. You know, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't tell if, like, he was actually enjoying it. I, I was a little I'm... bit... I'm sh I'm sure <laughs> so. he was. I'm sure he was. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Let's. Uh, uh, all right. Let me look at the chat, Wilbur. Don't look. Don't don't look at chat, Emma. Let's do one more. Okay. I'm not looking at chat. I'll take off my glasses. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wouldn't feel bad for that guy. I think he's. I think he's gonna be okay. Twenty four. Twenty four. Okay. Oh God. If this is another story. Okay. Um, I probably shouldn't say his real name. Um, let's call him Dan. Dan. Um, I <laughs> I um, had a fabulous uh, Valentine's Day weekend my freshman year of college. I hooked up with three guys. <laughs> nice. That, like, Valentine's night. Nice. Three separate Val guys. Three guys that night. Uh, yes. That was something I never done before. Okay. <laughs> it felt amazing. What? Uh, <laughs> so wait. So is this? Fuck. What number did we pick? I forgot. Twenty three. Twenty four. Twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Twenty three. Uh, Dan. Okay. So tell me. Yeah. Tell me about. So tell Dan me about. Was tell the me. First you know what? One. Tell us. Tell us. Yes. Yeah, you tell want? Us, tell us about this night. Okay. So Dan was the first one I hooked up with. Uh huh. Um, he was a president of a, of a frat, sorry, not a sorority. I don't remember which one. I'll be honest. I, I don't really care about frats. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I had the ego boost of, oh, I'm sleeping with a frat president <laughs> and mm -hmm. he was really cool. Um, we played video games afterwards, after sex. Um, he was a little disappointed cause I accidentally scratched his shoulder during sex and he was a little bit butthurt about it, but it happens. Well, I'm very like the legit. Here's the thing: is th having sex with three guys in one night. I'm just kind of curious about like the logistics of it. Like, all right, so he was number yeah. one, and then how do you, like do you? Mm -hmm. What? How did you then go from Brad to the next guy? So then I went to back after we had sex. We played video games for a little bit. I left because I didn't want to spend the night with him. I walked back to my dorm. Um, I got in my dorm. I was scrolling through like Bumble or Tinder or whatever. And then another guy messaged me and was like, hey, do you want to hang out tonight? And I'm like, okay. 
And I think the next one that night ended up being a theater guy. I was a theater major in college. Okay. So uh, I knew of him and I'm like, you know what? This is going to be easy. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he he ended up being amazing. <laughs> which one of the three guys what did that? Did it now as the evening progressed, did it get better or worse? It started off mid. Then it was really good. And then it was like, meh. All right, so, like so the middle like guy, curve. I was like, damn. Yeah. So tell me about, like, I mean, uh, nowadays, what, are you still as, <laughs> as adventurous or are you, have you calmed down? Um, what's, so where, where is, what's your vibe dating, these days? Um, I've been dating my partner for the past three years. It's going to be three years on Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just been kind of me and him for a little bit. <laughs> Valentine's Day has some special meaning to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so it'll be three years, what, tomorrow? Yeah. Nice, nice. Have you, so, uh, I, have you and him ever, like, played this game together with this, with this list? Yes. <laughs> He's on the list. <laughs> what? What, we were friends uh, which, with benefits before we started dating. Which story is his favorite? <sighs> um, there was another theater guy that I hooked up with that peed in the closet. I think that's probably his favorite story. Why did he pee in the closet? Um, that was his first ever college party that we met at, and I think he had one too many drinks, <laughs> and mm-hmm. he just woke up in the middle of the night. And I didn't realize what was going on. So he started, I like kind of sat up in the bed and I realized that he was facing his closet, just standing there. And I heard kind of like <laughs> sound and I'm like, oh, fuck. Um, so I like felt, tried to pretend to uh, like fall back asleep. Um, and then he stumbled and fell, like he tripped on his dresser and he fell and I thought he died. <laughs> so I was trying to like shake him died. awake, but he wouldn't. Yeah, because he wasn't like responding, but he was just like really drunk. And I was just like, oh my God. Fuck, I can't say his name. Uh, oh my God, this person, like, wake up. Uh, and then he was like, oh, what? And then I just threw a blanket over him. And. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, I then left. Well, shit, Emma. Um, uh, uh, this is this this was quite a game. Um, it sounds like you had a lot of fun. Um, glad to hear I that did. you're 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 uh, you know with with somebody that you're excited about. Um, yeah, they're great. Well, you'll have to call back in, and then we can talk about the rest of the list. Also, to the person who said my laugh is annoying, I know. <laughs> I told you not to read the chat, Emma. Okay, you're banned forever. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, bye, Emma. Is there anything else you want to say to the wait? Is there anything I else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, always wear a condom or wear safe shit while having sex or doing sexy stuff. Bye, Emma. Hi. Hello. Hi. What's up? How can I get you today? Uh, I just need some relationship advice, Gek. Okay. I mean, I don't know. If, uh, yeah. What's up? Ask me. So, I've been dating this girl for about a year and a half now, right? Uh-huh. And so, she, whenever it all started, right, I was, like, dating her friend. And then I hung out with her one night, and I was like, I kind of, I don't know. The girl was cheating on me, the first girl. So I got with her friends, and then I realized she was cool, right? So we start getting to know each other, blah, blah, blah. And I find out that her home life is, like, really bad. Like, they would shit in their bathtub. Okay. <laughs> so I would just be like, I was just like, okay, you can stay here for a few days. And then a few days turned into a few months. And then a year. So, like, she's never gotten a job, paid rent, or anything like that. And like, all we do is fight now, and I just don't don't know what to do because I still love her, but like some days I don't. Okay, 
Uh, let me. There's certain elements of your story that I want to get straight here, which is, uh, okay, your girlfriend was cheating on you, and so no, no. you. So, no. So what happened no, was so I was yeah. dating her friend. I was uh-huh. dating her friend, and then the girl I'm with now told me that the girl I was with was cheating on me. So I was uh, like, okay, then I'm just gonna get with her friend. Okay. All right. The girl you're dating yeah. now was friends with the girl you were dating. And the girl you're dating now told you that her friend, your girlfriend, was cheating on you. <coughs> and then you guys started to date. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So the girl I'm with okay. now never cheated on me. Okay. So what is your problem again? We just, we constantly fight. And we're like also we're also about to move into a house that has substantially higher rent with one of my friends. Okay. And she's not gonna have any means of paying that rent, just like because her parents like don't have any of her like credentials, like no birth certificates, social security number, nothing. So she's basically just an alien at this point. Okay, this girl does not have a social security number. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so um, is she putting her name on a lease? Well, it's 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 under my dad's name, but he's just gonna make us pay him rent. Okay, so your dad put his name on a lease, and your yeah. girlfriend, who does not have a job or any sort of income, and you, nothing, and your friend yeah. are all gonna move into this place. Mm-hmm. How many bedrooms is it? It's two bedrooms. Well, three bedrooms with a basement. Three bedrooms. Okay, so each of you get your own, get their own bedroom. Yeah. All right. So, and I assume you're going to pay for both your and your girlfriend's rent, and then your roommate is going to pay for his. Mm-hmm. And then my friend's going to pay separate. Why are you doing this? Well, the place that we live at right now is, like, really, really shitty. Like, okay. there's structural damage. The roof is rotting. Okay. It's just a really bad place. So your girl, your current girlfriend financially depends upon you? Yeah, in every sense. And you guys are constantly fighting. What are you fighting about? Um, it, it could literally just be about straightening up, right? So... You know, I like I kind of tell her that like she should help me around the house because you know she doesn't have a job, she doesn't do anything all day but sit on TikTok or do makeup, okay. right? So, okay. you know, I'm like, hey, you should maybe straighten up. And then she, me and I get, she and I get into this like huge like argument about shit from the past and all this other just like nonsense that has nothing to relate with the issue at hand. Okay, do you have a job? Currently, no, but I'm sitting on a lot of money. How did you get this money that you're sitting on? Commercial real estate. Okay. It says you're only 18 years old. Mm Mm-hmm. How did you make a bunch of money in commercial real estate? I have shares from my grandfather who passed. Okay. Okay. So you have money from your family that you're sitting on and you are using it to pay mm-hmm. for both you and your girlfriend to live in an apartment and you don't have a job and neither does yeah. she. Mm-hmm. Are you looking into getting a job? I mean, yeah, we're about to move like 40 minutes away from where we're at right now. So I'm like trying to get a job in the area that I'm trying to live at. But I had to quit my job because my manager threatened to shoot me. So. All right. Uh, what kind of job are you looking for now? Uh, just probably something in retail. Okay. Um, is your girlfriend looking for a job? I mean, she has no way of getting one until she decides to get her shit together. All right. Which I've been pleading for. All right. Tell me why you're why you what 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 every day 
is compelling you to want to stay in this relationship? Well, the fact that I've seen like through videos of how like horrible her house is. Okay. I I would feel okay. way too guilty at conscious to even right. send probably my worst enemy back to there. All right, so sympathy and guilt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay. Mm hmm. This is tough because, dude, you're only 18. You are also not, you're just like, you're just not even remotely in a position where you can reliably support another person. You're trying to yeah. support, a, you're trying to support another person on time. You're trying to support and develop another person. All of their emotions, all of their physical, logistical problems, their entire life on top of yours because you're 18 and you don't even yeah. have a job and you don't even have your shit together. So you are mm -hmm. trying to get both of your guys' shit together. And from what you've told me, it sounds as though she's not putting a lot of effort into getting her own shit together. Not at all. Okay, and you can sit there and you can beg and you can plead and you can try as hard as you can, but there is nothing in the universe that can get you to control the actions of other people. Yeah, no, not at all. It's all okay. up to her at this point. Okay, so do you rec so everything I just told you, do you recognize that and understand that? Yeah, I understand it completely. Okay. So, Garrett, um, I, I want to say I think it is an admirable thing to care about other people, to want to help other people. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like it's where your intentions are. Yeah, because, like, I've been in a really bad place in my life. Whenever I was, yes. uh, like, younger, I got kicked out of my house and sent mm -hmm. to rehab in Wisconsin and got mm -hmm. left up there. So, like, mm -hmm. I just felt like I needed to be the person that I never had. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I I'm not going to tell you what to do, but... While you have admirable intentions, I think there is a lot to be said about putting, uh, you know, as they say on the airplanes, to put your mask on before helping somebody else. Because mm -hmm. you have, you don't, like, dude, you, what do you have to give? You don't have anything to give. You don't have your own shit together. Yeah. And I again, I think it's admirable that you want to help people. That you want to help this girl and you want to be this thing that you didn't have. Mhm. Mm but you're just, you're just an empty cut. I mean, you have this money from your family, which is a, a nice start for you to you know, get your feet planted on the ground. Um, mm -hmm. But, dude, like, you gotta, you gotta fill up your own cup before you try to drain of it to help other people. And, uh, uh yeah, I, I, you know, look, you, that philosophy is up for debate, reasonably so. But I think it's something for you to think about. Okay, so if you were me, Gek, what would you do? If I were you, you're asking me if what I would do? Yeah. I'd set my boundaries 
with this person. And I would tell them, you need to do this or else I cannot help you any longer. But what if you said that countless times and nothing ever changed? I would have to go and focus on my own life. Okay. Garrett, is um is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, well I just wanna say I love your love your videos, Gek. It's my first time Thanks, ever Garrett. being on here. I've been trying for like a year. Mm-hmm. And I uh, hope everyone else isn't in a situation like this. And if you are, just kick the bitch out. Do what I can't do. I'll talk to you soon, Garrett. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gek. I'm like, I'm thinking that he's like so, you know, intoxicated with this girl and, you know, so deeply, deeply caring. And then he says, kick the bitch out. Um, that's actually a really tough situation. It's actually a really tough situation because, uh, I think he comes from, you know, this place of empathy for this girl who probably has a lot. I mean, she's, you know, she's a, she's young too. She has to figure her own shit out. Um, and she probably has a lot to figure out and probably is, um, going up against a lot. Um, but he's not, he's, his head's not screwed on either. And I don't think, and you know, even from her perspective, like she, she is going to have to within herself, figure out what's going on. And, you know, this 18 year old guy with no job and no idea of what he's doing is not going to be an appropriate guardian angel for her. Um, but that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough situation. I hope he figures it out. Hi. Hi, is this Lyle? It is. Who is this? My name is Alessa. How's it going? Uh, it's going okay. Um, I'm hanging out. I'm being a gecko. Uh, I'm trying my what best. That? Um, what's happening? So, I called in to get your vibes on a situation I'm having, um, a familial situation. Um, So, uh, I'm not sure what the call screener typed to, but basically, I am the eldest of four, um, and my my three other siblings are triplets. Um, I'm I'm close with all of them, which is super cool. Um, We're only about two years apart. So, our parents are divorced and have been since about 2000. Um, and basically my sister has been taking on a project at my dad's house, which has basically been to remodel my dad's house, which he's not kept up with. Um, and I feel like she's kind of bulldozing the project. And also I feel like she's kind of like, I'm not sure that my dad has a will in place and not that I like our dad's not going to die anytime soon, but she's kind of like remodeling this house under the guise that like like she thinks she's going to get the house basically when he dies and it's it's kind of a whole thing because I have a good relationship with my sister a good relationship with my dad but like I don't I'm I'm afraid of it turning into litigation when he does pass but it's it's kind of a whole thing so I was kind of trying to get your take on on you know your experience with things like this your sister has been remodeling your dad's house for him with the secret intention that he will die and she will get the house that she is remodeling. Well, fortunately, I mean, I don't think he, <laughs> I mean, that makes it sound a little like mischievous. Like he's, she's plotting. Sounds but incredibly, the way you are I, I describing it sounds very mischievous. <laughs> I don't think she's trying to kill our father, which is super cool. And I love that. Um, but He's he's 71, but he's a healthy 71. Um, And so, like, her whole 
thing is that like her lease ends in September, and so he, he lives in a nice neighborhood. Then. It's like <laughs> I don't even know that it's quite that, but I mean, I think she's kind of minimizing the whole thing. Where like. She's going to have to live with her 71-year-old father, and and I don't know that he's completely okay with it also, um, but I don't know that he's, like, going to, like, stand up to her in that way because he's fixing up her house, or she's fixing up his house. Um, so it's, okay. it's weird because I feel like, yeah, yeah, tell me your thoughts. Well, I, I guess I, I still don't fully understand what is happening here. Um, her lease ends in September. And so she's remodeling her her dad, your guys' dad's house, so that yes. her dad will maybe let her live with him? Y- yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, I think her intent is to try to live with him, presumably, like, rent-free, but, like, but she spent money on his house, so it'll be chill. And... What that makes no, that makes no sense. Why why does it, has she, has she told him that she wants to live with him? So yes, they've had that conversation, but then it's like more recently she's been like, yes, me and also my friend are going to live there, and then like what? I feel like she keeps like creeping up on the boundaries, and also like she's she's like had conversations with me about like yeah, and then I'll Airbnb the house, and I'm like, our dad is not like on death's door. Yeah, your sister is totally gonna try to kill your dad. That's every that's you're, that's everything <laughs> you're telling me. It makes me really feel like um, well, your sister I mean, is planning to, to kill your dad, and she told her friend that if her friend helps her um, bury the body, that uh, the friend <laughs> could also live there. That's the that's my but vibe on this situation. To, to perhaps rebut or negate that, my dad is a big gun guy. <laughs> so, I mean, you could take that, you know, either way from from either perspective of, of I mean, I don't think that's the case, Lyle, but it's just the, the part that concerns me the most is that they're both kind of hard headed folks. Um, and my dad has just let this house get into disrepair. And, and I feel like my sister, when my dad does pass, which I don't think is going to be very soon, by the way, like, I don't, I don't want it to end in, you know, my dad not having a will or something. Cause I don't know that he does. And then me, it, it impacting my relationship with my sister, who I, who like, the current time. Okay. I, I feel like yes. I wanted to, I, I did want to bring this back to you because I, I, I'm curious what your uh, role in all of this is um, well here here's the other part too is that i'm a sure. i'm a very handy person and so she she's called upon me to help with you know replacing lighting fixtures and tearing things up blah 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 whatever like i i i'm very handy so she's been like hey i'll pay you to come help listen listen if your sister asks if she can borrow some tools <laughs> don't lend them to her but should I still go help because ultimately Don't lend my her dad any is still living in the house? <laughs> no axes, no ice picks, no nothing. Okay. Um, look, this is right now f- from the way that at least you're telling me this story. Um, I don't. I got no fucking idea what your sister is doing here. Um, I don't, your sister, it doesn't sound like she's talked to your dad about any of this stuff. It doesn't sound like you've talked to your dad about any of this stuff, but it also sounds like it it is, is, but it sounds like it has concerned you enough that you're calling me to talk about it, which means that it is concerning to you. So uh, why don't you talk to your dad and tell him that you guys should, um, he should fucking make a will. I mean, he's 71. He should have a thing. He should have a yeah. piece of how paper. do you coach how do you coach a grown man that doesn't know how to set boundaries like that? You don't. Then what the fuck do I do? I mean I think that yes, I agree. He should have What do you mean should, what do you what do you do? Will. I mean cuz cuz I guess perhaps from my perspective I like I think getting his house repaired and remodeled uh-huh. or whatever is, is he a good effort, is he right? like, uh, at least is he is he like is he of sound mind and body yes and that's okay the thing, he's but not he's like in some legally must be taken care of kind of position 
No, but the thing is, is that he's let this house get into disrepair. And also he had a hoarder mother. So he's got kind of some like hoarderish tendencies to like, he's, he's, and he's also ADHD undiagnosed. So anyways, he's, he's like, let the house get really fucking crazy. So I do think it's a good effort to repair the house. Right. But I'm like, I feel like, you know, the motivations are a little skewed from my sister's point of view. Okay. Well, um, Um, I know it's it's weird. I know. Do you have no, any friends very that weird. have gone through this or yourself or anything do I have any like friends, that? You can tell do me. Do I have any do. friends whose sisters are remodeling their father's <laughs> houses so that when their father <laughs> dies, like, they could have the remodeled you. house for their air to Airbnb <laughs> out? No, I don't have any friends that that has happened to, and that has never happened to me. But um, fair enough. I mean, look, the, uh, what. Well, all you can really do is talk to your dad and be like, hey, yeah. look. I mean, don't get into some Shakespearean mock of whatever thing yeah. with it because you don't have time <laughs> for that. You're an adult no. of your own life. Who does? Um, yeah. Talk, just talk to your dad. I don't, this, the reason this is making no sense to me is because you could, you should just talk to your dad about this. And if he's unresponsive yeah. to your talking about it, then congratulations. You have done the best that you can. Sure. And if he's not in a, 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 a feeble-minded state, he doesn't have dementia or any of these kind of things right. that would that would make him legally unable to, to make decisions for himself, then unfortunately you cannot make decisions for him. Um, yeah, I think that you, again, I've, you like, could talk to your sister. You could talk to your sister and have these conversations yeah. and whatnot. But again, yeah. if your sister wants to to connive, and, <laughs> and you want to warn your father of of her conniving and chastise her for her conniving, those are your options. But outside of that, uh, there's you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the three of us have had kind of some surface level conversations and I think you're right. I need to like talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. I just, it's, it's, it's kind of this, uh, you know, being the children of divorced parents who had kind of a tumultuous divorce. And then like her and I are very close and it's like this weird thing where like her and I have not really had this kind of, you know, disagreement in our relationship before. So it's, it, it feels kind of different and new to even like, okay. you know, have conflict with her, I guess. So, Okay. Well, you don't have. Well, if it okay. makes you feel any better, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you this, and then before we go, if it makes you feel any better, you don't have to deal mm -hmm. with any of this. You don't. Ha if you don't want to, you can ignore it completely. Yeah. For sure. No, you're totally right. But you're choosing to. You know why you're choosing to? Because you care about your family. And I that's care sweet. and that's I love nice. them. That's a good thing. Don't <laughs> let it drive you insane. Um, Elisa, is there anything really else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, Lyle, thank you for taking my call. I want to give a shout out to my dog, Doug, who's sitting on the couch and my roommate, Nicole, and also my BFF, Katie. And I just, uh, I appreciate the chat. I appreciate you, Lyle. And I appreciate your very kind call screeners. God bless you, Elisa. Have a good rest of the night. And to you, night night. If only dogs understood shout outs, I'd shout out them all. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's up? Is this Gash? Yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry. What's your I'm name? Get my giggles out. Haley. How's it going, Haley? How can I get you today? It's fantastic. Um, it's fantastic. I'm living my life. How you been? How have I been? Mm hmm? Um, ha. Ah, I'm okay, but what's, I mean, what's going on with you, Haley? Uh, well, uh, you know, just, uh, got done celebrating my birthday week, and the reason I called in was part of my birthday week, so I decided I'd just share 
a very intimate secret that I've been holding for a while. Okay, and what is that? <laughs> I um, I prefer to have my alone time in a uh, sensory deprivation tanks. Do you know what those are? Yes, I'm familiar. Have you been in okay. one? No, I haven't. Okay. They're um, amazing. You prefer to have your alone time in sensory deprivation tanks. Okay. Yes, sir. What do you do when you're in the tank? So, it's a whole, the whole thing. Some of the tanks are like an open, like big, like hot tub. And then some you actually have to like get inside like a a tomb and like close the door and I know that can bother some people who have like claustrophobia it doesn't bother me because I'm kind of small so it doesn't matter which tank I'm in or which tub I'm in but um the first time I ever did one it was actually like a gift from my boss and people at work because I, I had been like super stressed out and they bought me one as a gift so I went in and I was like wow the last thing I want after being stressed out is to be alone in the dark with my thoughts for an hour. But however, once like you get in and like the water is really nice, it's the same temperature as the air above you. And it's like salt water and you're floating and like you can't tell like when the air begins and the water ends. And, like 10 minutes in, I was like, okay, listen, Haley, I wasn't going to really say nice. it, but it says here that you like to masturbate in the tanks. Yes, I masturbate inside there. I was getting there. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You said like, alone yeah, time, yeah, and I was like, I'll, I'm, I'm going to let her say it herself, but. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I went okay. on a rant. Yeah. You did, but it's Ten okay. 10 minutes in, like, you really get in tune with, like, your body and your, first your mind, and then your body, and like, oh, I feel really in tune with my body. This is nice. Okay. Why do you like to masturbate in the tanks? I just feel like the first time, I don't know, it just, I feel like I can really just focus on what I'm feeling physically. I feel like when I'm like with a partner, I can't, and I have, I have a lot of trouble climaxing with a partner physically, but when I'm in like one of these tanks, it takes me like a minute. It's just so different than being like, I don't, I have no idea. It's, I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> what well, I was going to, well, do you, do you cum? Yes. Where does the cum go? Okay, there's a difference between a female, like, well, okay, like, oh, do I squirt? Like, yeah. I, no, I don't. Well, yeah, I get wet, but like that doesn't go. Like, I don't think like I don't think like enough comes out to like ruin the tank because it does say in the, like the rules. Don't get any bodily fluids in here, but I'm like, I don't think anything's okay. coming out. I'm not squirting. <laughs> Do they are they testing the um Hey, I've been to the same place three times and they haven't kicked me out yet. So I think I'm doing good. <laughs> okay. Do you well, I mean, do you feel as though um you're at risk <laughs> of of potentially um getting caught? No, I've looked around. I've like looked at like I keep going into the same room, and I'm like, okay, they're gonna set up a camera this time and try to catch me. And no, mm. to this day, like nothing's happened. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep doing it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. Okay. Do you uh, anticipate like has okay? Have it tell me this has has masturbating in these tanks ruined masturbation? Uh, outside of the tank for you? It hasn't ruined it, but it makes, if I know I'm going to do a, like a, a tank, I will build it up for weeks. I will be like, I will not touch myself for like weeks until the tank happens. Mm -hmm. um, and that generally, you know, increases the sensation for you. Absolutely. Okay. And it's not a super, like, it's salt water. So it's not super, like, you know, like, 
it's not super comfortable, but if you haven't like touched yourself in a while, it's it's still nice. <laughs> Um, is this public masturbation or I guess because you're alone, it doesn't like legally speaking, where are we at with this? I don't, I don't, I don't know how you would, where this would fall in the guidelines. Um, I'm in a private room. I don't know. I'm on private prop. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No one can see me unless they put up cameras. Do you, so do you masturbate that. in other, um, questionable places mm, no hmm. uh, you know by the way I, I just want you to know I this makes perfect sense to me because um, all your senses are deprived so you just focus yep. entirely on the orgasm it makes perfect sense yeah and it's intense and it it comes quickly no pun intended, but yeah, it's a. Uh, Maybe I'll do yeah, it. Maybe I'll awesome. jack off on one of these things. But I feel like if I, I did it, it's more fucked up. Because then, did, if yeah. if I did it, it would it would be all jizzy. <laughs> I could edge in the sensory deprivation tank, and it, it wouldn't be that bad. Is it? I think. Um, I think you should try, and just see if they say anything. And then just never do it again after that. No, that's because if they do say something, then I'm, you know, I'm going to jail. It's not wait, like no, a... Wait, no, actually, wait, wait. Actually, you don't wait. get second chances I know where you can that. get away with it. Where? Okay, okay, when you when you do... If you're laying down on your back and you jerk off, yeah. you come on, like, can you come on your stomach? Because when you're floating, your stomach stays above the water the whole time. So if you can, like, come on your stomach... And like save it and then get out of the water without it getting into like the salt water. Your guilt, your gold, baby. You could totally do it. You understand why that's much worse, right? Why? Because when I get out of the tank and stand up, whoever's there is going to see that I have a bunch of cum on my stomach. No, no, fear. no, no, no. Oh, well, when you get out of the tank, you still have that whole room to yourself. It's, it's a private room. Whatever kind of tank you have, you have it for the whole hour. And you have to shower before and after. So the evidence will be gone. You should t- just just try it out. And I think you could do this. You know, the people who work there, they've got to know that people are checking off of these things. <laughs> they've got to know. Hey, let me tell you something. It's worth it. It's one of the best. It's one of the best feelings ever. Haley, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, yes, I wrote it down. Hold on. If it feels good, do it. If it feels bad, stop. Um, debatably. <laughs> debatable. It's debatable. debatable. <laughs> it's very, it's highly debatable conjecture, but I'm glad you came prepared to say something. Uh, thank you for calling, Haley. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night, Gek.